Hey folks, uh, this lesson is proportional and uh, non-proportional situations. Okay, so here's our common core strand for our, our, our teachers, and then our question is, how can we distinguish uh, between proportional and non-proportional situations? All right, we've talked about this already several times, so so here we go. Let's get started here. So if a relationship is non-linear, which just means it is, it does not graph a line, um, it might graph a curve, some sort of curve or something. If it's non-linear, then it is non-proportional. If it is linear, it may be either proportional or non-proportional. So when the graph of a linear relationship goes through the origin, then it's considered proportional. Otherwise, it's non-proportional. Okay, all that fancy, fancy word just means um, if a line goes through the origin, it's proportional. If a line doesn't go through the origin, it's not proportional. Okay, let's get a start here. Okay, so here's a line. Can you see this graph is going through the origin? Definitely proportional, but let's go ahead and go through this uh, application. So the graph shows the sales tax charge of the amount spent on the video game store in Sacramento. So does the graph show a linear relationship? Is the relationship proportional or not? Okay, so the graph is definitely a linear because it's graphing a line. And because it's going through the origin, which is right there, if it goes through the origin right there, then it's considered proportional. Okay, easy enough. So what is the slope and y-intercept of this graph of this situation? Okay, well, the slope, you guys, is, is let's see. Let's grab some points. What did I do? So the slope is... Um, uh, let's go up 1.2 over 20, okay? So up 1.2 over 20, I think that's what I did. Is that what yeah, I did? Okay, so if we punch that in the calculator, we get 0 0.06, okay? So up 1.2 over, over 20, so um, 1.2 divided by 20. That's where we get that 0 0.6, and that 0 0.6, it just represents uh, it's uh, 6 cents, uh, which is the amount of sales tax is paid for each dollar spent. Okay, so the y-intercept zero means that we pay no sales tax if we don't buy any of the video games. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so if it goes through the origin, it is a proportional. If not, uh, then it's non-proportional. Okay, so determine if each of these are proportional or non-proportional. Okay, they're both lines. Okay, they're both lines, but since this one does not go through the origin, and this one does go through the origin. This one's non-proportional. This one's proportional. Okay, easy enough. All right, you got a handful of those. So if an equation is not linear, remember it represents a non-proportional relationship. And we'll talk more about curves, particularly parabolas uh, in Integrated Math 1 next year. So a linear equation that represents y equals mx plus b, where b is not zero, is a non-proportional linear relationship just means it's a line that doesn't go through the origin and then if we have an equation y equals mx notice there's nothing uh, plus the b right there that's a proportional relationship because b equals zero y equals mx plus zero is the same as y equals mx okay so determine if each of the following equations represents a proportional or non-proportional relationship now notice, these don't all have x's and y's. In fact, almost all of them don't have x's or y's. This first one has a y, but this is the same as y equals mx plus b, where our, our m is the 1 right there, y equals 1x minus 14. Okay, that minus 14 says non-proportional. If it was just my, uh, y equals a, I'd say, okay, proportional, y equals 1x. How about this one right here? This one is the same as, you can just treat it like this is y and this is x, so this would be y equals 60x. So um, that is a proportional relationship. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier. y equals 450 minus 7x. Okay, that can be treated like that. And so these are applications for, I don't know, whatever n and p represent. Um, I don't know, they make up like, um, I don't know. Um, nanograms and pineapples or something I, I don't know but something that starts with the N or P that's, but it's the same as Y equals 450 minus 7 P X or Y equals negative 7 P X plus 450 okay so that's of that form it's a linear situation however it's non-proportional because of the plus 450 all right this one if you got that one this one's pretty easy Y equals 0.2 X plus 2300, okay, non-proportional. 
How about this one? This one doesn't have a variable over here or a letter. So this could be 36 equals 12x or 36 equals 12y. These, that, 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 that's, neither, that's not linear at all, or it's not a, a line that's going through the origin. So that one's non-proportional right there, OK? Just depends on, on what D represents, if it's the x-axis or the y-axis. But you need, you need something like this, you guys. You need something like y equals mx for it to be proportional, OK? So I don't have a letter here. I don't have a letter here. OK. And they, they, um, anyways, so if there's not a constant rate of change, uh, then the data represents a non-proportional relationship. So a linear relationship represented by a table. Uh, so if it, they tell you it's linear and it's represented by a table, it will be proportional when the quotient of each pair of numbers is the same or constant. Otherwise, that linear relationship is non-proportional. Okay, so that just means that for each y divided by x, it has the same values. And if it does have the same values, then it's uh, proportional. All right, so here's um, uh, the values in the table represent the number of U.S. dollars, three tours traded for Mexican pesos. The relationship is linear, so we know it's linear. Is the relationship proportional or not? Okay, so we need to see is y divided by x the same? Okay, remember, if you're given a table, the first column is always x and the second column is always y. Okay, think alphabetical order. x comes before y, so the first column comes before the second column, so this is x, this is y. So let's see, is this divided by this the same as this number divided by this number? Is it the same as this number divided by this number? So let's try the first one. So 1690 divided by 130. All right, now when they both end in zeros, you guys, you can just cross off those zeros. In fact, let me do that real quick, okay? Let me just cross those guys off. When they both end in zeros, they're gone. You can just cancel them off right there, okay? So we have 169 over 30 right there, and 169 over 30, or 13, sorry is 13. 13 times 13 equals 169. Let's try the next ratio. Okay, so so all I did is I'm, I'm checking is this divided by this equal to the same. Okay, well I know these can be divisible by 5. We got a calculator. Heck, let's just see. Let's divide them by 5 first. Okay, so um, calculator. So 3315, 3315 divided by uh, Five. I know five goes into them, so I'll change that top number to 663. And then 255 divided by 5 gets me 51. So I get this, you guys. I get, um, uh, I get 51. Is that 51 or um, I don't know. Let's go back to that. Let's do this. Let's jump to, I think I made a mistake. Let's just go to right here. What's this divided by this? So 3, 3. 1, 5, 3, 3, 1, 5, divided by 255. Okay, it's 13. Okay, so that reduces to 13. All right, so so it reduces to 13. Let's check the, the last ratio. So this divided by this. So I'm just going to go ahead and punch that in the calculator, and I get 13 again. So since they're constant, you guys, they're the same. Then uh, 13 Mexican pesos per U.S. dollar is a proportional relationship because they give us the same relationship. Okay, all right. So uh, determine if these linear relationships uh, represented by each table is proportional or non-proportional. So we want to see is uh, y divided by x the same on both of those. So 30 divided by 2. Okay, I'm just taking um, this y divided by this x, okay? 30 divided by 2 is 15, okay? I just want to see, is the next ratio the same? 90 divided by 8. When I punch that in the calculator, I see they're not the same. I can stop right there. That is a non-proportional relationship. It's linear. It just means it doesn't go through the origin, okay? So, um, uh, so let's do that with this one. So 1 divided by 5, that's reduced as 1 fifth. How about 8 divided by 40, okay? I'm just doing over here on this. I'm going y divided by x, y divided by x. Now 8 goes into 40 uh, 5 times. So I'm going to reduce this. 8 goes into 8 once into 45 times. That equals 1 fifth. Oops, I went backwards. Okay. And then let's do uh, y divided by x on that last ratio. 13 divided by 65. 
Okay, 13 times 5 is 65, so that also reduces to 1 fifth. So since they're all the same, then they are proportionate with each other. It's a proportional relationship. All right, so here we go. Laser Tag uh, League has the choice of two arenas for a term tournament. In both cases, X is the number of hours and Y is the total charge. So compare and contrast these two situations. Okay, so this one's just Y equals MX. Okay, so... So remember, X is the number of hours, so it looks like it's going to be $225 per hour for Arena A. All right, well, let's at least talk about that. So it's a proportional relationship because it's just Y equals MX plus zero, or just Y equals MX, and the hourly rate is $225 with no additional fee. Okay, now this hourly rate, we've got to get the slope, you guys, and be careful. The slope starts from here, looks like at 50 and we'll go up to this point. So it goes up from 50 up to 250. So from 50 up to 250, it rose 200 and it ran 1. So rise over run. So remember, here's 1 down here. So these are going by 50s. So from here to here, it went up 200 over 1. So the hourly rate of this one is $200 per hour. But it doesn't go through zero, 00. It has an initial starting fee of $50. Okay, so Arena B's graph is a line that does not include the origin, so it's non proportional. And the slope or cost uh, per hour is $200, but there is an initial fee to get in the door is $50. Okay, so if you went there, say for an hour, Arena B would be more expensive, but as soon as you start going more than that, Arena um, uh, B would be less expensive. Arena A would be more expensive. All right, Julie's remodeling uh, uh, her house or whatever and has a choice of two painters. In both cases, X is the number of hours and Y is the total charge. So compare and contrast these. Okay, so here's Y equals MX plus B, so Y equals 45X. This one is a proportional relationship. This one's $45 an hour no additional fee that would be the plus b right here okay this one is non-proportional for a couple of reasons 20 divided by 0 is undefined 55 divided by 1 is 55 90 divided by 2 is 45 so they're not constant right there so this one here we've got to figure out uh, what's the slope the slope is um, this one's going up plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 so that's the change in x goes on the bottom this one's going up plus 35, plus 35, plus 35. So this one is the slope is $35 an hour right there. Okay, so painter A charges uh, are proportional, and the hourly rate is $45 an hour with no additional fee. Painter B uh, is a non-proportional relationship because their, um, the ratio of Y to X isn't the same. Um, I would need 0, 0 right here also, you guys. It would have to go through 0, 0. And because the table contains 0.20, the initial fee is $20, but the hourly rate is that change. So plus 35, plus 35, plus 35 after each hour. So the hourly rate is um, uh, $35 an hour. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, so test prep A, uh, center A, the cost for test prep A is given by, um, uh, by given Y. Golly, my typo is right here. That, that, given, let me take off that B right there, so Y equals uh, 20H, where C is the, the cost in dollars and H is the, uh, I don't know, I think this is going to be C, sorry, this should be C, my bad, you guys, all right, so, I mean, I'm sorry, gosh, uh, where C is the cost in dollars and H is the number of hours that we attend, and let's go to test prep B, okay, so test prep B is uh, they charge a $25 per hour to attend, but you have a $100 coupon. So let's compare these, you guys. So test printer, uh, prep center A has the cheaper hourly rate of $20 an hour, and they don't have an additional fee. Now test prep B, you guys, is um, uh, uh, due to the $100 coupon, uh, they're cheaper for tutoring for 20 hours or less. As soon as you go over 20 hours, then the $25 an hour is going to start adding up more money than the, than the $20 per hour over there. All right, you guys. I hope that makes sense, and take care.